Alright, um, we meet again, and by the title of this video, just know that I am not going to be editing this video at all because I know for a fact that I'm going to edit important parts out and also because I'm pretty lazy right now. But, alright, shoot, I have to do this right. So, I reached 1,000 subscribers one week ago, and I realized everything on my channel has been either ranty, positive, or just stupid. And I haven't really touched on some serious issues in my life, or just personal stuff. So the strip down challenge is basically you talk for 10 minutes and I have my timer setting right now, so I should, pretty, I should start pretty soon. And I'm going to be looking at my iPad, so just don't pay attention to that. And just know that this is going to be rambly, it's going to be negative, it's going to be serious, and yeah, I tend to forget stuff, so I'm going to go. And if you think this is for attention, don't even try with me, okay? I'm not going to even argue with that. So this message is, this video is basically a message to my new friends and my old friends back in South Carolina because I believe you guys have a right to know the bad parts of my life and because I haven't even told it to my old friends and I haven't told them my experience with this movie. Alright, well, my life can be described as a roller coaster and so far I've been through five major dips and I have a ring light so that's why it's a new setup just so you know. So the biggest one, I think, was coming to terms with myself, and basically that was the summer after 8th grade, I didn't go through depression, I just went through a serious time, the first serious moment in my life, where it's like, okay, I'm gay, I need to know what to do, how to do it, and how to make my life positive and not turn it into the negative lives that some people do have. And that's what I mention on my channel a lot, which is my biggest change. That's when I just changed my hairstyle, everything, like my wardrobe, my veganism. But it wasn't really bad, because it led to the best three months I've ever had in my life. And that's when it leads to one of the worst three months of my whole life, which was coming out to my parents. That's the second dip. Let's see. Oh god, I better do this. So my relationship with my dad has never been the best. You know, he's that kind of father who wants his son to do sports, you know, go fishing with him, which I can't do because I'm vegan, and just, you know, hanging with the boys. And as a child, I've always hung out with girls. I never really brought friends over. I was always on my iPad and laptop and just playing games. Um, and I liked shopping a lot. So my dad knew that I wasn't really the manly son he wanted. And the reason why it was a really sad part coming out to my parents, not because my mom, okay? I know most parents, they freak out the moment you tell them, and I respect that, and I give them time. My mom is fine with it now, she just asks some stupid questions every now and then. Well, my dad hasn't been that well, and I'm probably not going to show emotion on this, because I don't know how to show emotion on a camera. It's weird, I never cried in one. But, you know, he would tell me, like, my whole life is wrong. I still have talks with him to this day at the dinner table and that's not really good. And, you know, I was, I was almost kicked out by my parents. They almost disowned me and I was threatening to leave also, but my sister taught me wrong and I'm so glad my sister said that. But, yeah. So my dad basically told me my whole life is a mistake and I'm a mistake. And I'm probably gonna go to hell. So that's fine. And then came the third dip, which was probably the worst, or not one of the worst ones, because it had such a bad timing. I just recovered from coming out, and then the next thing I know, I'm moving. And that, first of all, like, I didn't know how to feel. I mean, I heard so many things about people moving and they go through depression and stuff. It's like, I'm not, I told myself, that ain't gonna happen, you know? Never. Never to me. So I kind of subdued it from my life. I never really brought it up to my friends until like last minute. But then I started to break down. I would say it was right before summer break because I realized this is the last time I'm going to see all of my friends. And just thinking about me going away from them, it was it was a hard time. Just so you know, to my old friends at South Carolina, if you could give this video to my math teacher who you I know you know who that is, that would be great. Um, I think she wants to know how my life is going. To all the other friends who don't know this channel, that'd be awesome too. And thank you for watching me and supporting me. Then came the fourth dip, which was me about to move 
and that was when the Orlando shooting happened. And what sucks is that every dip I have, the moment I recover, I get like a week, like one week. Then I go back into another three months of just sadness and not depression, but like people can tell when I'm not myself. And I'm glad they can tell because it shows I show my emotions a lot. And you know, my grades dropped every single dip, which wasn't really good. Personality went through some phases, eating habits change. I remember like staying in my bed all day, just crying over my friends, even though I'm not showing emotion right now. And I would go through so many tissues and ice cream. And I also lost my best friend, or I almost lost my best friend, which was one of the scariest moments in my life because, you know, who wants to lose their best friend? But I'm glad I told myself not to do that and I fixed that. But going to that fourth dip, you know, after the shooting, I was, I, as a person who was part of the LGBT community, you get scared of even like showing any form of the stereotypes. You get scared of going out of your house. You get scared of being in public and just just knowing what could happen at any time. And that was also when Christina Grammy was killed. So that wasn't good either. And lastly, it was the move. And not during the move, because that was fine, but after the move. Because once I got here, you know, it's like three months of doing nothing. You have no friends. You have no sports. You don't, you have two people to talk to and that's your parents and you don't know the area at all. So I went shopping, I ate food, you know, I, lo I saw stuff and that was good. But when you think about it on long terms, it's slowly like your emotions start to build because there's no one to talk to. And for me personally, I can't talk over social media. It's so hard for me to do that. I have to be in front of a person. And that is when I consider myself going through a minor depression because I searched up the symptoms because I was just curious and you know, they were dead on, and it was just a weird realization. And also, during the move, I started to develop a social anxiety. Um, I remember going to Costco, and it looked so much like the one in South Carolina that I had a breakdown. I've never told anyone this, I think. And after that, I realized, you know, wow, I haven't been in public for so long, you know. I, have, I forgot how to socialize. I should get out more, but... I don't know where people go. So that wasn't really good. Um, to this day, I still, it's hard for me to talk to guys. You know, I freak out over the locker room all the time, but it's not a big deal. I mean, it's just, I know I can't go into sports because I will cry. I remember we had fire drills during like fourth period. And when I walked out there, you know, I was filled with juniors because I'm in a pre-cal class and everyone else is now number two. And I almost cried too because there was no one to talk to which I think was pretty sad, but that's fine. I mean, that, that's not a big issue. And then, let's see. On the first day of school, I didn't say it on my video, but I cried after because, you know, first day of school is hard. You meet new people. I did meet new friends, and I'm so grateful I have them. Thank you, guys, just so you know. But I remember in math class, since I was so emotionally attached to my old math teacher, seeing a new one, that almost brought me to tears as well, but I just I had to hide it. I mean, I can't cry in front of the public like that. And then obviously we, I still had talks with my dad about homosexuality and, you know, that I, I'm, I don't care about that. It, he can't hurt me that much anymore. Just, I've learned how to make an intolerance to him or just be tolerant with him. And, but the problem that's probably going to be with me for the rest of this high school like life is social media. Obviously, I make YouTube videos. Um, I have a Twitter, I have an Instagram, and I have a Snapchat. And when I moved, I had, a, had it in the back of my mind that like I might be sad looking at my friends, but I never thought it would go so far because I deleted all my photos on Instagram. You can go check right now if you haven't. Um, I deleted Snapchat for two days and I lost a lot of streaks and I even, I didn't even tell them like why and this is why. It's because it's hard for me to look at people who I once knew through Snapchat because Snapchat to me is really personal and seeing their faces, it obviously made me sad and that's why sometimes I don't respond to people after that 
And on Instagram, you know, seeing people's lives, seeing them with other friends, and seeing Ultimate Frisbee people like that, it's just hard to see. So I don't go on Instagram. I still Snapchat sometimes, but I can't look at stories still. And don't think I will ever be able to until maybe I graduate. I think that's it. <laughs> Those are the five major dips in my life. And that's the end of the video. Make sure you like and subscribe. And no, I'm going to stop. That's not appropriate. But thank you guys so much for 1,000 subscribers. It mean, You don't know how much it means to me to see that there are people who support me and have watched me go through these hard times, especially on the live streams, because it gets so personal. And it's just a chill live stream, which I do every night around like 8 o'clock. And yeah, thanks for going on this adventure with me, and I post up videos every Saturday. Everything is less than three, and I should probably turn the camera off, shouldn't I? I is this thing even on? Oh, it is. All right. Bye, guys.